with me now is a fellow by the name of Slugger, last name, please. Labby. Labby. Pretty simple. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I, you know, with a, when it ends in an E, I said, Labay? Right. Labby. I can understand. So, forgive me. It's all good. So, Slugger uh, is the man, uh, and he has been in racing forever. Can I say that? Yeah, 35 plus years. Yeah, yes. something like that. Wow. And uh, did, you, did you grow up in NASCAR? I did. So, uh, back when I was just growing up, my dad was uh, a weekend warrior on the NASCAR North Series back in Maine. And I always wondered where he was at night and weekends because um, basically he was off racing. I was growing up as a kid. So, uh, when I turned 16, I, I started getting more interest, more so than hating him being gone all the time. I figured I would join him. and, and Travel that, with him. Yeah. So, that uh, my first race I went to with my dad in Thunder Road in, in Barrie, Vermont, uh, we won, and it really from nice, that. Nice yeah. first trip. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I was like. Sure, he wanted you to come back, yeah. too. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, well, this is easy. Let's do this again. So uh, so that really started, uh, you know, my interest level in into NASCAR and, and just racing. So eventually uh, just moved away from Maine in 1989. We, we had run the Oxford 250, which is a big north-south combination race. Uh, and then after that, uh, the race ended, I asked a friend of mine from uh, from North Carolina, I said, hey, I need to send something back to North Carolina. They're like, yeah, whatever you need. And, and the guy says, what is it? And I said, me. me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had $1,000 in my pocket and a suitcase, and away I went. And that's, that's how my career in, in the South started. You, you were crew chief uh, in various different, uh, but you ultimately wound up as crew chief. You were involved in 500 NASCAR races? Yeah, so as a crew chief and over 1,100 as a NASCAR member, so – uh, I've been to a lot of races, seen a lot of things, and, you know, that's what's great with my job in TRD is that I've seen so much over my experience in NASCAR that we try to bring some of that technology uh, to the NHRA series. So uh, it's great for me to be involved with TRD and all the drivers and, and that we support and others uh, and working with NHRA. We try to implement a lot of the things that we've learned along the way in the NASCAR series. Well, Toyota and TRD weren't involved at the very beginning of your career. Right. And so you've obviously made a connection with them over the years. When did that all take place? So I've been working uh, for TRD for the last almost four years. So basically a good friend of mine, Andy Grays, who's the, the manager uh, for the, the TRD side in North Carolina, uh, I kind of, I was burned out, honestly. If you go back to the NASCAR days, I was a crew chief for 20 years. And, and when you're a crew chief in NASCAR, you work seven days a week, oh, yeah. 90 to 100 hours a week. Uh, you wear a big target on your back. Say everybody's a, mad at you. Everybody's pissed, you know, and just uh, nothing ever goes <laughs> right. So even when you win the race, it's still not good enough, right? right. So uh, you're only as good as your last race. So, you know, the, seeing my family suffer, like when I was a little kid, you know, when my dad was always gone, my kids were going through the same thing. Uh, so – one day after Bristol uh, with Austin Dillon, I just called my wife and I said, this is it. You know, I don't feel like doing this anymore. And, and if you lose that passion, there's no sense to do it. So it was time for a change. Uh, I did a little bit of stuff for NBC Sports. I was an on-air analyst. Uh, really enjoyed that. But then uh, and when Andy called me, he's like, hey, I, I want you to come over and help the NHRA series. Bring some of our technology over to them. Bring your wisdom and experience and work with those guys. Uh, so we did that almost four years ago. And, and one thing I quickly learned when I got in this garage was, like, these crew chiefs know a lot about clutches and engines. I, I don't need to get involved in that. I don't need to learn about that because that's completely different from my background. Absolutely. So my approach was to be another set of eyes, come in and, and pay attention to things that the crew chiefs weren't. Tires, chassis. Uh, safety, uh, headers, just aerodynamics, just different things. Team, team interactions. Yeah, too, yeah. Right? So, hey, think about this. And, you know, it, it took a while for the crew chiefs to get comfortable. With, with the, you. The, yeah, because yeah. here I was coming in, uh, and I stood back for a couple of weeks and just watched and tried to absorb. Because I've only been to one or two drag races. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, yeah, but you're I, a NASCAR guy. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, uh, know? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so we go in circles. These guys go straight. So exactly. completely different environment, but a lot of the things do apply. Um so we just took a while for the crew chiefs to get comfortable with my involvement. And, uh, and probably about three months into it, they started, you know, 
interjecting more and asking questions and we started making their tools better and when i say tools it's the the support tools that we have from you know all the track information that we give them the weather analysis uh, tuning programs many many different things that we do for the teams and you know trd is no different than anybody else we participate in the sport of drag racing for 20 years now and, and it's a it's a great involvement for us but we the tools that we provide we want to be the best right sure uh, we want to be better than everybody else mm-hmm. so we work really really hard uh, to give factual information to the crew chiefs. We have two engineers that run up and down the track all the time getting information. We put all that information in spreadsheets uh, along with weather and different formulas that we have and try to give them uh, what they can run for ETs. We try to give them as much useful information to make the best decisions. Well, and, and a lot of that's oh, wow. just about data. And if they have sure. other people acquiring data sure. for them yeah. in a format that they use, it just makes them better. Sure. Because then they don't have to focus on it. They can trust or, you. Or maybe they weren't doing that. it to begin with. Well, like I said, it's another set of eyes, right? Just right. come in, hey, put a different spin on it. Look at it this way. I, I, I don't want to get involved in clutches and engines, but we want to help you use the other tools to complement your clutches and engines, right? So right. Uh, in a day like today where the weather's going to be changing all day long, water grains up and down, we're hoping our, our information that we provide to our crew chiefs will be very beneficial to help them make the right decisions when they get up to the water box. So, right. But you've also learned a ton coming <laughs> to NHRA. You're talking sure. water grains. Did you ever talk water no, grains in NASCAR? No, not at all. But <laughs> you, you certainly, uh, you, you know, you pay attention. It's free, right? And right. that's the biggest thing I did when I got here three years ago, four years ago was just absorb it all. And I went right to the crew chiefs and said, look, I don't know anything. Please help me. Uh, And, and, you know, John O and uh, Tommy DeLago, they were probably the ones that wrapped their arms around me the most when I got here and and really just paid attention. And, of course, Nicky Bonafonte was very good as well. And just, man, there's so much to absorb in drag racing because it's completely different. But uh, every run. Every run's different. And and, and still today I learn so many things. Uh, and, and my notebook gets longer and longer and longer of things that I want to work on to help these guys do a better job. Did you ever run across in all of your NASCAR days what you run across here and you've got more horsepower than you can actually put down to the ground? <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, we're restricted in NASCAR a lot now because, you know, uh, the speeds are way too high for NASCAR's, you know, uh, View mentality. Of the world, yeah, right? so uh, it's definitely different. And, and we've seen a lot of NASCAR drivers come over to the events and watch and listen and tony stewart's been driving here lately and uh there's a lot of cool things that you know nhra guys or or nascar guys are learning a lot from this sport and they're getting a lot of interest so uh nhra sport is definitely taking off the fans are, are back now in the yeah. stands and that's that's great tv ratings are getting better and better every week and uh it's great and you know for me is i don't like it when our cars go out and smoke the tires right i, I feel like when that happens we let them down so we go back to work and work harder on coming up with a better solution to, to give them the best information. Well, and that's all clutch management, right? right as you know, which well, you didn't really have to the track, which the, you really didn't have to worry too much about in NASCAR, right? And so, so I, and you say that you don't really have anything to do with the engine uh, engine or clutch side of it, and you leave that to the crew chiefs. Is that how you do that? We do. You know, uh, the crew chiefs have to make that final decision, and, and again, we try to get our information to the crew chiefs as soon as they can so they can formulate everything into one big uh, one big analysis to, to make the right decision. Yeah, you're giving so, them information yeah. to, to, to make decisions on. Yeah. You may not yeah. be actually deciding, okay, this is how you're going to run sure. the clutch. You're just yeah. saying, here's what's yeah. out there. Now, yeah. you figure out how your clutch works the best under right. these circumstances. So our information pretty much complements their setup. So how, yeah, are, yeah. How, how is your relationship with the, Col- the Coletta bunch? It's strong, you know, that because uh, Coletta has, has, has bled Toyota forever, yes, you know, and – uh, to come in and help those guys, they were like, you know, Andy Graves said, hey, here's Chad Head, you're going to work with him. And, and it's been fun working with Chad. He's been in the sport for a long time, much like myself, and uh, he's a wealth of knowledge. And we do a lot of cool things uh, for the funny car, you know, because it, it is a Toyota Camry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we work really hard. We take it to the wind tunnel, the rolling roads uh, wind tunnel. We blow the speed at 200 miles an hour. And we try to find a performance advantage in a wind tunnel, just for an example of some of the things that we do. But uh, we've helped Coletta's design different chassis by running different CAD models uh, to make improvements for reaction time and also uh, getting the rear tires going forward, you know. And uh, there's definitely a lot into it. Uh, We've built header calculators, just different things to help uh, our teams get better. How how have you had a relationship, I assume, with uh, Connie? Yeah, Connie's pretty cool. He's uh, he's a rad man, you know. And uh, actually, last week in Charlotte, um, Kyle Busch got to meet Connie as well. Right, and, and Con- saw that. Yeah, Connie's uh, Connie was pretty impressed by meeting Kyle. But 
uh, Connie is um, – he's a unique individual. He just um, – he wants to go fast, and it doesn't matter what happens. Uh, if he blows an engine up, he, it's because he was trying to be the best. Uh, and to Connie, it just uh, – it's fun walking in his trailer and looking at all the destruction and parts that have blown up because Connie's our guy. <laughs> and the but, things he learns from it, though, too. Yeah, but you what's know, funny was when Mobile One came into the sport, you know, we, they decided they wanted to build a better engine oil, and we did all the testing on Connie's car because we knew that Connie would push the limits and push the Mobile One lubricant uh, to, to the extremes, and, and certainly he did. Well, you mentioned Kyle Busch. I saw his, uh, his video after he started. Uh, is it J.R. Uh, J.R. Todd's, yeah. Funny car, and just that, that – kid grin on yeah, his face sure. and I, I you know the smells and stuff that was pretty that was pretty awesome to yeah. see you blending the nascar guys into sure. the uh, nhra guys i know when i first went to my first couple of events i was all up on the start line right by the cars taking it all in now i'm like 20 feet back i'm kind of <laughs> like <laughs> okay. yeah there's a lot of stuff that happens here i don't need to be a part of this so. Yeah. yeah so do you have a trd team meeting with all of the drivers and the cars uh, with everybody together at the same time so Does typically that ever yeah so typically we meet with the crew chiefs uh we go over the, the past history of what's happened and say like at houston you know we give them a breakdown of uh, what lane typically is better or if uh, one lane leans to the left or the right to profile if there's bumps or dips in a racetrack we review all that and a lot of times the drivers after they make their run they'll come up in the trd trailer we'll pull up their video that we make and review. then we yeah and we pull up the data and uh, simply just go over what the driver just did. You know, my, my common saying to them is like, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. You make the lines, and I just tell you what the lines say, right? So uh, we just give the drivers an honest opinion of, hey, this is what happened on your run. So, um, you know, the crew chiefs are always worried about the next round, and they don't have time to really sit down with the drivers. Yeah, they're, they're looking and, forward, not right. behind them. Yeah, and that's the thing I always tell all the teams. Like, look, you focus forward. That's your job when you're at the racetrack. So, uh, the drivers will come in and hang out with us in our, in our trailer and, and just, you know, just download and, and have an honest conversation. So, so how, many, how many data lines, because you, you're showing them graphs of what's going on as the vehicle, how many different data lines will you have available on a graph, though you may not show them all at one point, but to go over them? Yeah, so basically in, in the model that we have, there's at least 30 parameters that we wow. can pull up, uh, and it all depends, you know, uh, the biggest thing is we look at the dry shaft and we look at the lateral to see if the driver's steering, if he's, you know, if they smoked the tires at 600 feet, it, was it something the driver did by trying to get the car straightened back up or whatever it may be. So uh, one of the coolest things that we do is on Thursday, we measure the tracks and we check the profile of the track for bumps and dips. So basically what that means is we take that information, we put it in the race back data. So if a driver goes out and he blows the tires off at 400 feet, we can, we can, uh, uh, Identify that. Identify bump. if that bump had something to do with that. And sometimes, uh, you know, the crew chiefs will realize that, hey, there's a bump at 700 feet. We better take some timing out or do some different clutch applications. So yeah, just don't, a lot don't of, let this happen here right, because that's yeah. the wrong we spot. Just, we just say, hey, look, be aware, alert, that there's a there's a, a situation on a track at 700 feet that you need to be prepared for. You, have, you get information from your own teams. Can you gather information from the competitors that are running out there and what you see? Shh. Everything, <laughs> everything that happens when that gate opens is analyzed. Okay. It has to be. And we constantly build a big database uh, to prepare our teams when we come back. So basically, before we even got, get here, we have a playbook. And we typically, like I said, we know the trends and the history of the track and who runs good at this track, who doesn't, and yeah. you know, who's got the best reaction times and uh, all those things. Everything goes in a big database, and it's constantly updated all the time. Are you not thrilled to be over here on the drag racing side instead of the circle track side? That's a whole new challenge for you. Well, it, four years ago when I started, NHRA was my main goal. This was my assignment. Uh, and the last couple of years, they've thrown the truck series at me, the Xfinity series. So, <laughs> okay. so yeah, so I was just watching practice going Coda. on in Coda. So, yeah. uh, you know, Texas is a big weekend for us. You know, we have the race going on in Coda. We have everything going on here. You know, we build the trucks in San Antonio. We got our tim and a headquarters in plano so texas you're gonna move uh, here aren't you oh geez I, who knows <laughs> who knows what tomorrow brings right but uh, today we're focused on uh participating in this event and being low qualifier both in top field and funny car great Slugger, you, it's you great to have you here you talk about bringing a history of the track how does it affect your history database when they grind it and try and smooth it out does do you throw all that out or are you still well, no, you, so basically we look back at the past history and then we can tell exactly what they did for improvements and then we can put that into the formulas so as you, well. So you try so. and make some allowances, adjustments sure. rather, yep. 
but you know because of the improvements they've yeah. done but still yeah. you still got a base you got to have a base to work from you do and you and it's got to be factual information you know i always tell my guys garbage in is garbage out right, right? right so right. if you don't give them the right accurate information we're wasting our time we shouldn't be here so i constantly push our engineers this information before you release anything uh, via text or whatever it may be it has to be factual i know you got to go we thank you so much for stopping by and talking to us. It's a real yeah. pleasure and an honor to meet thank you. you. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks for having me. And, and again, NHRA series has definitely changed my outlook of motorsports <laughs> because I never realized that you can tear up so much crap in three and a half seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Thank you, guys. Love you. Yep. Thank, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Slugger Labby, and uh, he is uh, with the TRD folks uh, all here. And uh, thank you, sir. We appreciate you. And uh, our next guest is going to be the president of the NHRA, Mr. Glenn Cromwell. And uh, he, did we lose him, or is, did he get sidetracked? Is he taking pictures with no, somebody? No, I think he's, he's around here somewhere. So okay. I'm, well, we're just going to probably wait. taking pictures, signing autographs. Uh, that's what I'd do. Kissing doing. babies. Kissing babies. That's what I'm going to do later. Okay. Well, that, that's that's all fine. Well, Sign autographs and kiss yeah. babies. Uh, uh, so did he leave? Hello, Mr. Mars. Did, did, did Glenn uh, leave? Did Glenn leave? He's coming. Oh, he's getting some coffee. Okay. That's what they're calling. There's a bar right around the corner. Well, there. It, uh huh. It, uh -huh. What are those things uh, with mm -hmm. the with the scotch and the and the, and the coffee? Coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Uh, yeah. It's just uh -huh. coffee. Okay. Good. No, those are. Uh, um, gosh, what are they? Coffee. No, they're good. That's what they, they are. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, especially with the whipped cream on oh, top. Oh, man. And all that. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, cherry. So uh, just uh, to let you know uh, while is. waiting for Glenn here Glenn. Uh, that we are uh, coming to you today live from the uh, NHRA Spring Nationals out here at Houston Raceway Park. What Joining us now is the president of the NHRA, Glenn Carmwell. Glenn, it's good to see you. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Good. Uh, How's the weather? The weather is perfect <laughs> the, the sun is coming it out. is beautiful the sun's sunny yep. we're running cars, cars fans are coming the track, in right? there's a lot of excitement i yep. was just walking around uh, the midway in the nitro pits with seth angel uh, yep. who's the owner of the facility yeah, what a and, guy uh, just a, yeah he's done a great job hasn't he mm -hmm. well mean, he, the whole, he, the whole he told me that it was almost as if you you two were dating this past week <laughs> because you've spent so much time together with with the weather forecast and you know uh, unfortunately we go through these bouts especially in the spring and uh and we also go through it in the fall but um it, it, it just so happens that this is the week NHRA is here and it's going to rain. Well, no, no, no. We're in a dry slot right we're now. We're a dry slot. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's the word. That's of the, the word day. that they That's use, the word, right? right? Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 The dry slot. That was uh, new for me. Mm -hmm. So um, lots of changes uh, since the last time that we talked to you here, especially with the COVID thing. Oh, my gosh. What an absolute nightmare. How is it? Uh, from a standpoint of the president of the NHRA that deals not only with the racers, but also the tracks, the state, the local governing body, whatever that is, having to deal with the fans, we can only let so many people in. And it How varies do we sell from tickets? event to event. Yeah. All of this stuff that you've, that you've acquired through COVID. Thank you very much, COVID. I mean, yeah. it's got to be a nightmare. Well, listen, you saw me what? Two years ago, yes, and yep. I look like I've put on about ten years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you we were yeah, exactly. <laughs> not to say that it's the lights, it's the lights, it's yeah, the, it's the lights. lights, right? Now it's uh, you know, listen, it's it's been a challenge for everybody, you right. know, personally, professionally. You know, you think of all of our fans, but you know, as I tell everybody, th there's something special, and, and I will I will say this the rest of my life. There's something incredibly special about the NHRA yep. and the stakeholders in the community, and and you know, I came from a different. Uh, motorsport before I joined NHRA in 1997. And you did? It, yeah. yeah. I, Where I, were you? I worked over at Feld. I did Supercross and okay. uh, some oh. of that. And, uh, you know, and, and it was great. Don't get me wrong. But there, there's something incredibly special about the people uh, here. And when things aren't going well, um, people pull together. Exactly. And, and they come together and they help. I mean, I always say it's, you know, it's kind of like a team that, you know, maybe struggling go, going from second round to third round or to the finals. And, you know, maybe it's a single car team that just doesn't have the resources. You see other people come in and, and help. help. Yeah. It's yeah. help. And what I've sport never does that? What sport does that? Nobody. Right? I mean, they're usually. Here. Yeah. But here they do that. And I always use that example of. That's kind of what we've gone through the last 14 months, and, and our fans have stuck by us. You know, we shifted <laughs> our schedule, I think, three times in 2020, <laughs> um, and that's no easy feat, right, for, for our fans to go through. But our tracks, 
we're incredibly flexible in, in, in our race teams. I, I will tell you from our sportsmen to our uh, professional race teams have been incredible. And, and they've all stuck together. And, you know, I mean, we've had a lot of communication. Um, sometimes we agree. Uh, sometimes we don't. But at the end, everybody pulled together. And I don't, I don't think, you know, you look at 2020, we were able to get 11 events in, um, nine during which is surprising, COVID, right? Which yeah. is surprising, but that I don't think that happens if if you don't have tracks, fans, race teams, and sponsors that are all kind of behind you and supporting it's, you. It's the ingenuity and, and of flexible, planning, and right? Flexible and to deal with the situation. Flex, flexible adapts. ingenuity of planning. It, it, yep. it is, and you know we had, you know we always believe communication is the key to success, right? Right. And what we sat down in, in March when this actually hit of 2020, we thought it was going to last for two weeks. Amazing, like all we of all us, did. right? Yeah. You know, yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll be right in Vegas in two weeks. Everything <laughs> will be back normal. But we realized probably mid-April that, you know, what we were up against. And uh, we, uh, we said the way we're going to get through this is communication. And we're going to have to communicate to the teams and all of our stakeholders literally – almost on a daily basis and, and and we did we did and in the in the 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 team at nhra all for employees but our leadership team is incredible i mean we all pulled together and uh, you know took a certain level of responsibility we broke out you know ned walliser and kristen winsel handled a lot of things for us on the on the track side josh peterson worked really closely with the race teams you know we had someone handling the media and the the employees so Really, the teams, you know, they step well, up. That's what when, a leader does is delegate as well, well and then coordinate. They, they do a great. you got to have a good team. Right? I can only um, imagine the bill from Zoom. <laughs> I mean, the Zoom calls must be out the wazoo. I want to ask you about uh, some, uh, some news that I, I came across this week, that you guys um, are going to split up uh, with NHRA headquarters uh, in Glendale and also uh, in Indianapolis. So we, we have we have an, an office in Glendora, California. Glendora, I'm sorry, Glendora. Yes. It's about five miles from p the, the Pomona. Uh, Pomona. Uh -huh. And, you know, through COVID, you know, what we, we, we own a facility there. Um, and as we looked at it, you know, we, we have less employees today. Um, you know, the workspace and going forward, the way people are going to work, whether it's remote or hybrid, um, you know, we have space. And, you know, we felt, um, listen, is, is it better to just sit there on all this space or is there a better business decision to right. make that sure. if you can sell it and we can put that capital back in the sport and invest in different areas of the sport that we need coming out of COVID, that's the best place to do it. We can lease back. Plus, we have looked, you know, a lot of our employees um, that we currently have. Uh, are choosing to go to Indy. Uh, a lot one, of teams one, are based there. A lot of teams are based there, which makes total sense. Right. Uh, Jeffrey Young, he of marketing and media, moved there about two months ago. Um, as we rehire people back from COVID uh, that we've lost positions, we will make those hires back in Indy, uh, and we will we will invest in that in that track in that facility. And to your point, that is our teams. We've got our teams there. We do think other teams will start going there. And uh, really could be a base of where it's out of. But I think the one thing I will say is we have no intentions of leaving Southern California. We will always well, have. That's where your home. That's uh, where everything. That, that's the started, heritage. Yeah. That is our heritage. That's where Wally started it. Uh, we, will ha we will have a base there, whether it's called headquarters or not, I, what the future brings. But uh, we will have a place in Southern California uh, as long as I'm. I'm here. And it's nice you know. to see California opening up as well. It is. Allowing you probably to get back to Pomona at the end of the year, but also Sonoma um, that's back on the schedule uh, because California kind of shut you down last year. Yeah, uh, they, they did. <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. Yeah. You guys, you guys want to come and join us in California? <laughs> no, come. but we we'll certainly will join you in Indianapolis. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sonoma. Well, just to, to, to clarify, so um, – yeah, we are we are excited. We are seeing the state open yeah. up. Uh, we do think come June fifteenth, we're going to get some great news from Governor Newsom. And uh, you know what we uh, we have done um, actually, Pomona. You, you know, for the finals, uh, we actually took the Winter Nationals, ironically, uh, and that will be run on July thirtieth, August one. So the Winter Nationals will for twenty twenty one become the, middle of the summer the Summer Nationals. Uh, uh -huh. So we will the Western Swing will actually be. 
uh, Denver, uh, Sonoma, Pomona. So in it's, uh, it's Christmas in July. It is, yeah. and uh, we'll, 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 we'll we've got some exciting news that we're gonna um, send out here shortly. But uh, you, could, you, you could don't want to break it on our yeah, show. You know, we, we do maybe do a little racing at night. You know, kind of like the oh, old days in Southern go. California. In Houston, so, right? Houston's coming back in the fall. <laughs> no. No. I wanted to commit. <laughs> nice, nice you, try. Nice you, try, you, Jeff. You, you, right. you stunned me with that silence. I'm like, huh? <laughs> he knows something I, that I don't. Have you been talking to Seth Angel? <laughs> I, he, he didn't mention that on all those phone calls that I had. It's a plan. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, um, so what do you expect here this weekend? I know that the, the schedule changed overnight, uh, that we've moved uh, uh, pro qualifying up, and, um, and it obviously – allow some more time just in case it does rain we've been very fortunate so far it's looking good Sun's radar's looking good we're keeping our fingers crossed so to get two rounds of qualifying in today and uh, I, I assume that 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 was the plan is to make it all fit in the day yes uh, yeah yeah and, and, you know what we have seen a lot of our fans the majority they come early yeah they come early. We come early, right? Yeah, we I did. mean, I, I mean, I got here early, and I've watched people coming in, and you know, we had scheduled, I believe, one thirty for Nitro, twelve for Pro Stock, I believe, somewhere in that range. Mm-hmm. And we said, hey, listen, if we can get, you know, ninety, ninety-five percent of our fans are here by ten a.m., eleven a.m. Let's start. Let, a little let's early. start. You know, let's Absolutely. look at the weather, and, and and that works for everybody, right? It works for our fans, works for the track. And works for the race teams. And, and the sure race did. teams are itching to get out here. And it and royally screwed the uh, in-wheel time schedule that we had. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, well, just we're, saying. We're well, happy I, to see everybody streaming in, though, yeah. too. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, I think that was the panic I got on myself. We need you over here <laughs> right, right now. <laughs> that was part of it, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, but, Don. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, you know I'm just teasing just, with just, you. No, I know. Just one quick question, and, and you may not can answer it. But I mean, obviously, you're a fan of the sport, you know, the racing. But you're at your level. You're also the business guy. Do you, do you ever get conflicted between the two? No, no, no. You know, I think it, it really helped me in the position I am. I mean, if you look at my background, I grew up around motorsports, not not drag racing, but I grew up around SCCA. My dad, right, you know, had an MGA twin cam and raced when I was a little kid, and so I've been around racing, you know, like a lot of us, you know, since we grew were five. Up with yeah, it, yeah, grew up with it, and then. Uh, you know, once I uh, finished college, I went on and uh, worked for Feld. It was called Pace Motorsports at the t- right, time. Right, right. And, uh, and then, of course, it's Feld. So I, I really learned, you know, the, the, the promoter side of motorsports, right? You know, um, the business side. And I touched every piece of it. Worked for a gentleman, Charlie Mancuso, great promoter back in his day and, uh, and really learned from him. And, and then when I came to NHRA, you know, I, I, I started as a division director. And, and I think if you guys know. And brought those skill sets and, with And brought you, those though. skill sets. And, and you really learned the NHRA at the grassroots level, working with the junior drag racing, uh, the uh, Lucas Oil drag racers, right. the, the Summit ET cars. I mean, you really learn. And, so you, and don't you, really, you don't really have to separate the sport from the business you, because it's just it's, one for you. It's one for me. You know, I grew up and I worked every piece of it. Worked on the television, the the marketing, the the operations, you know, I understand the the racing. I'm involved in, in at every level. I'm involved in uh, working with PRO, and you know, if there's issues on track, you know, I I get involved in it. I don't necessarily handle it. We have right. two two people, Ned Walser and Josh Peterson, that are fully involved. But you know, I think it's important. You, you know, know for what they're doing. Basically, what they're doing. You yes, know, you, you have to. You know, and as you said. You got to understand every piece of the business, and you got to know when to delegate. You got to put good people around you and let them do their jobs. And, and con- congratulate on Camping World. That was yeah. huge. Yes. <laughs> and Thank what a great blend that is, is with that, what happens at track as well. Yeah, is that perfect? But it camping couldn't be more I mean, better. We, yeah. We're a camping ground. Well, yeah, right? you, know, you go out there and drag around, track. Race around camping. Yeah. But, you know, th- you know, a big. Big shout out to Marcus Lamonis. I mean, he really stepped in with. How is he to work with? He's great. He, he, is, he just seems like he, he's I a mean, fun he, guy. Very focused. Oh. And, and he is out to win whatever it is. He's out to win. Kind of like yeah. drag racing. Yeah. He, he is exactly. Don't get in his way. Because he is, he is going 300 miles an hour and don't get in the way. And yeah. he's got things in his mind. Um, I did a call with him just two weeks ago on a project that we're working on. And um, it's amazing how much he knows about this sport. I was blown away. Now, has he, he been to a drag race? He has not. He was going to come to uh, Gainesville 
Uh, but of course, you know, that was still mid-March yep. and people were still getting the vaccine. He was not fully vaccinated at that time. So he just, you know, wasn't comfortable, but uh, I know he's going to come out soon. And uh, uh, I, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you know, he doesn't re really know, you know, he does the, the, uh, uh, the trucks over at NASCAR, but it, it's amazing how much he is engaged with our sport at all levels, the fans, the tracks the drivers i mean he really knows yeah i want to see his face standing between two nitro cars when they start up and head <laughs> we, down the track we, we all do we're gonna, we'll, we'll make sure that that's on that is fox such a great face <laughs> yeah. glenn it's great for you to come by we really no. appreciate you and thank you, uh, thank you very much and uh what a great event and uh we sure are glad that you still keep coming back to houston and hope that'll remain that way for years to come well thank you for you guys for everything you do you do a great job thank you. helping us prom promote the sport pushing it forward and um just thank you yep. thank you very much well thank so you be wish safe. you lots of success yep. thank you yep absolutely uh glenn cromwell he's the president of the nhra and uh, obviously you can help tell by the sound of the uh, exhaust uh, out there on the racetrack that uh, the racing cars are on the track on the track so that's also so good you need news. to get here well yeah come on out we'd, we'd love to have you um and we need to take a break Okay. Yes, sir. So this is the uh, In Wheel Time car show coming to you today from the NHRA Spring Nationals in Baytown. We'll be right back after this quick break. Houstonian-owned Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has the most sought-after models in the Houston area today. When you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, you now have a place to go. General Manager Lincoln Stahl guarantees Bayway will beat any competitor's written price on the new vehicle you choose or pay you $1,000. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is easy to get to on Highway 225 near Beltway 8 in Pasadena. Whether it's online or in person, you're welcome like one of the family. Bayway Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram .com. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise in and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, June 19th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event at the Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard just south of I-10 in Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, June 19th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Wheel Time Car Show will be there, too. Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday morning, June 19th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. Inside the Loop, visit Tailpipes and Tacos on the Southwest Freeway at Shepherd, weather permitting. NHRA Camping World Drag Racing. It's an 11,000 horsepower Nitro Rodeo coming to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown. Catch all the Nitro and Pro Stock action at the Mopar Express Lane. NHRA Spring Nationals presented by Pennzoil this weekend. Matt Hagen, Leah Pruitt, Erica Enders, three-time world champ Steve Thorns, and 16-time himself John Force. Kids 12 and under are free in general admission. Get tickets at HoustonRaceway.com. Houston's got horsepower. Don't miss the first ever Houston Summer Auto Show. May 19th through the 23rd at NRG Center. A limited edition collection of your favorite brands and models. Including the new Ford Bronco and Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Tickets online only at HoustonAutoShow.com.